Just for your information, you will be seeing these signs at the Got it. All right. Good morning, everybody. And thank you so much for the invitation to address all of you and um, answer your questions and also tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so let me start with the, with the personal. I am deeply rooted in my community. My husband, Steve, and I have raised three children here, and they have had the tremendous privilege of growing up in close, close proximity to great-grandparents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Growing up in this multi-generational close family has shaped who they are as ethical, empathetic adults who treat everyone with honor and respect. Now, if only they'll be able to afford to live here as adults, I can't wait to be the next generation Nana who gathers everyone at my home. Steve and I met while we were both students at Columbia Law School and began our practices here in San Jose. I later shifted to a career in education, teaching middle school students about the importance of civic and community engagement. In 2014, I was elected to the San Jose Unified School District Board of Trustees, and in 2015, I was appointed to the Santa Clara County Commission on the Status of Women. I serve on the Children's Vision Council, and I'm a student mentor at Lincoln High School. I'm running for a seat on the Board of Supervisors because I believe that our county needs a strong champion for all families, children, and seniors, and a vocal advocate who speaks on behalf of so many who don't speak up themselves. I am well aware of the shifting demographic in our community, the doubling of number of seniors uh, over the next 15 years. And I've heard that described as a silver tsunami and, and other terms that you've heard that one. Um, other other terms that illustrate sort of a negative or dangerous perception of aging. And I believe that the challenge is not the growing number of older adults, but it may be our absence of imagination, creativity, and leadership regarding how to maximize the value of this maturity and longevity. When I worked in the business sector, I was engaged in actively shifting perceptions of ageism, promoting the value of universal design, and encouraging our member businesses to become age-friendly and dementia-friendly. What I found was that the people that were paying attention to issues impacting seniors were in the healthcare and social service industries, and the perspective was generally, what are seniors going to cost us? What sort of liability do they represent? And my interest was in showing seniors as a strong asset to our communities, new lifestyle, social contribution, and marketplace opportunities. Many of our seniors, um, all of you by, by virtue of being here, are retired. For many retired folks, this is a long-term proposition, <coughs> potentially, if we're fortunate, 30 years or more. Some people don't have to work. Um, perhaps they have pensions or choose not to work beyond typical retirement age. Many of them become philanthropists, volunteers, mentors, and tutors. Many others do have to continue to work, and they're finding that to be a tremendous challenge. Part of my work involved portraying the advantages of multi-generational workforces, mentoring, loyalty, stability, and institutional knowledge. I conducted a survey of 1,400 business members to get a sense of um, what the climate was like for older employees and found a lot of negative response, so I was part of creating a program in partnership with Age Friendly San Jose, PayPal, and New York Life, uh, two companies that are actively promoting and recruiting, in case anybody is looking, uh, for more mature employees. Uh, but let, let me shift a little bit from uh, my professional experience to some policy, policy priorities in public service. And to start with, the questions on your, your green sheet, I can um, dispatch with quickly because the answer to all four of them is yes. And the question with regard to transit that has a how, I will, I will come back to in a couple of minutes. Uh, of the number of issues that I'm interested in focusing on uh, as your county supervisor, at the top of the list is affordable housing for older adults that incorporates universal design practices, expanded access to ADUs, house sharing programs and other partnerships that would allow for more aging in place, and protection from eviction when new owners take control of property. Also interested in programs that provide affordable home repair and adaptation services to help older adults remain in their homes longer. 
I will pay attention to streets, condition of streets in our unincorporated pockets, ensuring that they are in good repair, pedestrian and wheelchair friendly, and include visible signage. Uh, my nearly 85-year-old mother-in-law, who's here today, uh, knocks on doors for me, and she believe me, she lets me know when there are issues on the sidewalks or if she can't find street signs. A third issue that I would address is advocacy for long-term services that are affordable, accessible, and community-based. Upwards of 70% of the population of adults 65 and over will need long-term care at some point, and most of us don't prepare well. Our county does not currently have a continuum of care for long-term services and supports. It is true that Medi-Cal offers in-home supportive services that provides in-home care for over 26,000 older adults in the county, but many more people don't qualify for Medi-Cal, yet still can't afford that $10,000 a month assisted living or private in-home care, or often in the case of people with middle to late stage dementia, uh, the cost of adult care, adult daycare, which runs $65 and up each day. I would support, among other programs, a proposed pilot to support families with middle and late stage dementia by subsidizing adult daycare. Uh, prioritizing access to transit is crucial for our senior population who are driving often, uh, often less and need that accessibility and affordability. So as our, as our county supervisors play a role in the development of regional transit, um, a voice advocating for the particular needs of seniors has to be at the very top of that list. And finally, as with any other group, we need to be sensitive to the particular needs of older adults who may feel underrepresented based on their culture, language, ethnicity, gender identity, or sexual orientation. I was raised to honor older adults with whom I engaged. When I was a little girl, my great-grandfather lived with me, and I remember being intrigued by his stories of a world that I didn't recognize. I only learned as an adult that he lived with us because he had virtually no savings and wasn't able to live independently. I realize now how fortunate we were to spend his last years benefiting from his wisdom and love and how fortunate he was to have family nearby who welcomed him in. How terrifying it must be for so many older adults who don't have savings, aren't able to live independently, and don't have families who are willing or able to take them in. I won't have the opportunity to do this for my parents, as both of, them, both of them died far too young. But for all of us who don't have parents to care for, there are even more older adults who don't have children who are willing or able to care for them, and I'm determined to be their advocate. Our county needs a champion for families and children and seniors. Regardless of our age, we are each of us someone's child and each of us deserves a lifetime of engagement, honor, and to the greatest extent possible, independence. And I look forward to being your champion. Thank you so much. Thank you.